Hello and welcome, AP1, coming at you live from home. Uh, we'll start our lecture today on circuits. Uh, you can go ahead and download the circuits PowerPoint from our website at Z-Physics. Um, if you can't watch the live stream, that's okay. Uh, once the live stream ends, you can watch the video. I'll download and then upload it to our YouTube channel. And I can definitely make YouTube um, accessible uh, and open it up on uh, the firewall so that it is not blocked by Global Protect. All right, so let's go and title our notes. Let's see. This will be March 16, Circuits 101. All right, let's see what we're doing. Okay, so we, we, we finished off electrostatics uh, on Friday. Uh, we know it's four essential uh, equations, and using those equations, you can kind of get one from the other, etc. Um, electrostatics is uh, pretty minimal when it comes to the AP test. Um, there's a little bit with with uh, with how you can incorporate mechanics, uh, similar to the electron in a cup problem we talked about uh, earlier. Uh, I'll go ahead and start off actually with a uh, a quick mastering physics problem, the one that is due uh, this Saturday. So that would be the end of electrostatics. Um, actually, I'm not sure if I have it up. Let's see. Yeah, I do have it up. Um, and this is a problem technically uh, more to do with AP Physics C as uh, as we do capacitors in AP Physics C. Um, and it, capacitors are not on the AP1 test. Uh, however, I uh, put this question in, left it in there, uh, just because uh, there's, you know, there's this relationship I want you to uh, see. Um, and that is the energy stored in a capacitor. Uh, energy stored in a capacitor. Capacitor. All right. Um, a capacitor is kind of like a battery. Um, it, it's basically the the plates we were talking about. So imagine having plates, uh, two parallel plates, like so. One's positive, one's negative, and uh, and we know that there's this nice uniform electric field inside. Okay. Uh, what you can do is essentially make a capacitor sandwich by putting an insulating material in between. which is technically called a dielectric, and you can learn more about it. Uh, well, if you want to learn more about it, consider taking AP Physics C next year. Uh, but for now, we can just call it an insulator. Um, and so if you have a really long sheet, imagine having a really long sheet of saran wrap or, or aluminum foil. Um, and then you put this insulation insulation between them. That way, the charges can't move from one plate to another. They're separated, so there's always a difference in the charges between the two plates. Um, and then you have to roll it up like a you know, Danish or a cannoli, some sort of dessert. And so it spirals in like a like a Danish. There we go, we got some cream filling in there. Um, and by spiraling it in, you'll see that the capacitors come in the form of basically a cylinder. You can't really see the spiral because it's all internal, um, but it's all covered up and you can't see anything. So essentially it's a little tiny little can and we use tons of these. We, we can also uh, miniaturize it. So if you, if you take a look at like your motherboard on a PC, um, you know, you can have a very small one, uh, and a really tiny one. 
Uh, but in any case, the ones that we have in our lab, they're kind of like black cylinders. Um, and they act like a battery, except you know you can charge and discharge them really quickly. So if you need a boost real fast, if you want to, you know, light up a light or a flashlight really quickly, you can just you know discharge a capacitor really quickly and give you a burst of energy, a burst of uh, or a flash at the time that it's needed. In any case, uh, by separating the charges, we've kind of stored in some energy in the electric field itself. And similar to other energy equations, uh, the, electric, uh, the energy that is stored inside your capacitor is 1 half C times V, V with serifs, so you know that's your uh, voltage, uh, squared. Okay, not the potential, this is V with serifs, so we use that for our voltage. Uh, essentially, it's the energy times and in this question, this is a problem number problem 21.40. Uh, so it says, uh, in this version, it says, to what potential should you charge a blank mu f capacitor to store a 2j of energy, blah, blah, blah. OK. This is called a capacitance. That's how much the capacitor can store. Uh, units are farads. Oops. Yes. So capital F as a unit is farad, whereas as a variable, it is force. Yay! So another one of those confusing ones. Um, and this is just essentially a plug and chug. Uh, you got you got the energy, you have this uh, capacitance, and you're just looking for the voltage. Um, so square root of 2 times the energy divided by the capacitance should be your V. So it's the energy of the capacitor. All right, and the rest are pretty simple, uh, is BO. Um, all right, move it on. Now for circuits, yay. Yeah. Now we have a really cool circuit kits that uh, hopefully we'll get to uh, use when we get back to school. Uh, but for now, I guess, uh, We'll do some virtual FET circuits, and then, uh, uh, yeah, don't mess around with your, with the circuits in your in your house. You might, you might turn off the electricity, or something, some other stuff. So, uh, until you have been certified by me, once you take your lab exam, then, uh, until then, don't mess around with anything. Just do it on the uh, in the FET virtual labs. All right. Uh, if we look at our uh, PowerPoint, we can start there. Let me switch the screen to our PowerPoint section. All right, here we go. So electric circuits, this is circuits number one. We'll do circuits two later. Uh, starting off with a, uh, this is almost a joke. I swear, you know, you're, you're a buddy or like a, uh, you're starting out as an electrical engineering major you're taking, you know, you're a freshman taking your first class or something. Uh, you know, during lecture, you, you see this. It's like, oh, yeah, cool, cool. And then you get home. Uh, you're supposed to do your mastering physics homework, and then mastering physics throws you something like this. You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> this is not what we talked about. Uh, but you eventually you figure it out. You get through your mastering physics. You're done. You t you're ready for your midterm. And then, bam, this is what your professor throws at you. All right, no, they don't. Um, the idea is that even if it's a very complex, uh, you can actually change and convert your circuits and reduce them, kind of like reducing fractions, uh, reduce them down 
uh, until it gets back to here. Now, can you do that with all circuits? Technically, no, but at least in AP1, you can. Um, all right, and for those that you can't, uh, we will learn how to do some sort of something called Kirchhoff's or Kirchhoff's uh, loop rules, uh, and that should help us uh, analyze circuits that can't be reduced down. Oh. Is anyone out there watching the live stream? We have 18 viewers. If you're watching the live stream, say something in chat so I know it's working. Maybe. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Yay. There's the pog again. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's start with this quick video. The video is only four minutes long. It's going to talk about how batteries work. So here we go. Uh, watch your sound settings. If it's too loud, it might blow out your ears. Perhaps the greatest achievement of modern man is the ability to harness the power of Zeus. The importance of controlling electricity is easy to take for granted, but electricity is why doing stuff at night is so easy, and at this point, it's what keeps the first world first. But what should be the second greatest achievement of the industrialized world gets even less attention. It's the ability to put Zeus in your pocket. The battery is the silent, unsung hero of modern man. And batteries are everywhere. Just go to a concert. The ability to store up some energy, walk around with it, and use it when you need it has had a profound effect on our lives and our cultures. The battery is what gives us instant images, and that has made things possible, like internet memes and revolutions. There are many different types of batteries, but they all pretty much work the same. Let's look at a cell phone battery. Now, to understand how a rechargeable battery works, you need to know a little background. The Electron. This is an atom. The inside has a clump of positive charged particles in it called protons. The outside is a buzzing cloud of negatively charged particles called electrons. And electrons are the key to electricity. The movement of electrons is what makes the lights go on. So how do you get electrons to move through a wire if they're happy just buzzing around as part of an atom? Well, it turns out that electrons just want to be happy. And for electrons, happiness is being at a lower energy level. Think of it like this. Let's say a high energy level is like working at a high stress job and a low energy level is like sitting at home stress free. If your boss said, hey, do you want to work from home? You do that. Home. And if your boss said, hey, do you want to stay at home and still get paid for not doing work? Who wouldn't do that? Well, electrons do the same thing. For electrons, buzzing around some atoms is like working in a high stress environment and buzzing around others is like sitting at home and getting paid for nothing. A battery basically gives electrons a path to a happy, stress-free life, but makes them work for it, which we'll get to in a second. The Ion. Here's the atom again. As we mentioned earlier, there's a positive charge part and a negative charge part. In a normal atom, there's balance. The number of protons equals the number of electrons. But if an electron leaves this atom, now the positives outweigh the negatives, and we're left with a net positive charge. Add electrons, and we're left with a net negative charge. These are ions. An ion is simply an atom that is no longer neutral. It has a charge because it has either lost or gained electrons. So while electrons want a low energy, stress-free life to be happy, ions just want to be neutral. And they do this by finding an opposite charge and sticking together. The heart of a battery is electrons and ions trying to achieve happiness. The battery. Let's look at what parts make up a generic, rechargeable battery. First, you need two different materials. One that for an electron is like working 80 hours a week for an abusive boss, high energy level, and the other is like sitting at home collecting paychecks, low energy level. In other words, given the option, an electron in material A would rather be in material B. In fact, if you just put these two materials together, electrons would just hop from one to the other. They would take a shortcut. To stop electrons from taking the shortcut, you need to add a barrier that forces them to take a detour. This detour is the circuit. In other words, the thing you're powering with the battery. And finally, you need something for ions to move around in. Here's how it works. With the circuit off, electrons in material A are stuck in their high energy, high stress atoms. Out of reach and on the other side of this electron barrier are material B atoms, which would offer an easy, cushy, low energy level position. Let's turn the circuit on. Now you've offered electrons a path to happiness. Since they can't go any other way, they begin flowing through the circuit to material B. 
back at material A, the atoms are losing electrons, because that's where the electrons are coming from, and they begin turning into positively charged ions. As we mentioned before, ions always want to be neutral, so these guys need to find a negative charge. So they go to where the negative charges are, in material B, where all the electrons are going. You'd think that these ions would just meet up with their lost electrons and become neutral atoms again. But unfortunately, the electrons are way happier where they are now, so the ions have no choice but to kind of mingle with the atoms of material B. So what we've got is kind of a mishmash with B atoms mingled with A ions. As the battery discharges, electrons and ions are making their way from A to B. When you can't fit any more material A ions into material B, the battery is fully discharged. To recharge the battery, you just do things in reverse. Instead of a circuit, you're putting an energy that forces the electrons back into material A. The ions then leave material B and rejoin their lost electrons, and the battery is ready to discharge again. Now, at the end there, uh, they talked about recharging. Basically, you have to use something that is a bit more powerful uh, than the battery that you have. You can actually reverse the direction of current by having a voltage potential that is you know, much stronger uh, than the one you have. Uh, and so a rechargeable battery basically pushes uh, the electrons the opposite way and then goes back to the other side so you can reuse it. Uh, with capacitors, you can kind of uh, do it much faster and and uh, when you learn how to do RC circuits and other things, you'll see that we can even control how quickly we want to charge and discharge uh, a capacitor. Uh, whereas batteries are, um, <laughs> can I go to knots? <laughs> Sorry, uh, if you want to go to knots, consider taking AP Physics C next year. Um, yeah, so what was I saying? Yeah, so with a, with a much stronger uh, voltage potential, you can you know, push the uh, electrons back in. All right. Uh, so we want to we want to talk about uh, three things today, and that's voltage, current, and resistance. Uh, voltage, you know, think of the actual flow, the impetus uh, to move. Uh, when we have gravitational potential, GH. Can you be a tad louder? My speakers are bad. Uh oh. Um, my mic is at maximum. I guess I could school these in and closer. Um, all right. So voltage, uh, kind of like gravitational potential, GH, uh, you know, based on which way it points or which way or where you have high potential and where you have low potential. And, uh, you know, your, your positive charges will flow from high potential to low potential. All right. Come on, this is AP Physics 1, focus. This is why I need moderators. Where's Nishank? Nishank banned these trolls. Uh, anyway, um, so high potential to low potential. Now, of course, electrons do the opposite. Uh, they go from low potential to high potential, meaning it, low voltage, or sorry, low volts in potential to high volts in potential. Uh, like salmon going up a waterfall um, and uh, and to make it easier on us to make it easier on us instead of thinking about electrons that are flowing inside of our circuit uh, we're going to do the reverse in that we're going to imagine positive charges even though positive charges don't actually move remember the protons are stuck inside the atoms uh, we're going to imagine s positive pseudo charges if you will um, will, uh, that are moving inside our circuit from high potential to low potential. That way we can kind of compare it to gravity and how you know, positive masses fall downwards from high potential to low potential, high height to low height. Um, if we imagine positive charges moving in our circuit, then the positive charges will move from high V or high potential, high volts, to low V. And V, again, can be plus or minus, so the more negative it is, the lower it is. If you want to imagine zero volts as, as the ground, high volts uh, would be you know, on top of a mountain, whereas low volts would be down below uh, inside a trench. All right. Um, resistance. Okay. 
So along your path, as you're moving from high potential to low potential, you, the positive charge, uh, might run into these things along the way, you know, rocks in this case against the water where the water molecules crash into the rocks and it kind of slows them down a bit. So similarly, we can slow the flow of charges. Again, as we talk about charges inside a circuit, uh, we're just going to imagine positive charges flowing around, even though technically negative charges are moving the other way. Excuse me. So our pseudo-positive pseudo charges are moving forward and eventually crash into these um, rocks along the way, which we call resistors. Now, uh, let me switch to my other screen. So, uh, when we write V, uh, recall that V is technically uh, delta V, the uh, difference in potential. Electric potential. Who is this focused procrastinator? <laughs> uh, change in electric potential. And um, so essentially, it's your, in, in circuits, for the most part, it'll be your battery or your power source. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about circuit symbols today as well. Uh, but anyway, the battery uh, will provide you your difference in potential. And so you know that this dimple side has a has, is the positive end, and then the flat side uh, is your negative end. Ah, I see. Of course. It's from your Pokemon Go name. Now it makes sense. Uh, so this battery, uh, it, you know, uh, has a barrier in between, kind of like what the video was talking about, um, so that the electrons can't just flow from one side to the other. So when you create a pathway by connecting the battery as it goes through something, um, it's like falling from the top of the mountain. So these are my mountains. Uh, to the bottom of a trench. So I guess we're down below inside down below in the oceans. Is that a trench? The Mariana? Or I don't know what it's called. Here's my Everest. Can we still watch this after? Yeah, so how it works is that as soon as the live stream ends, you can browse the videos and it'll be up there for 14 days, at least on Twitch. But once I end the live stream, I actually download and then re-upload into the YouTube channel. And the YouTube channel will be uh, open, uh, so Global Connect will not block YouTube at least. Um, so it'll be on our YouTube, and then it'll be it'll be there forever. Uh, but it does take some time to download. It's you know I found out that you know 55 minutes is about two gigs, and then I have to re-upload the two gigs, and then I have to process the two gigs. So it takes about two hours. What is the channel name uh, on YouTube? Uh, Ooh, it's this it's just my name but if you uh, if you go to the home page and then scroll down uh, it's the same it's the same one that has the uh, the music video but again uh, when all of the uh, processing is complete then I can actually uh, post the link on our canvas so uh, as a student you can always just go straight to canvas and then once the video is up I'll put the link on canvas and then you can watch it there All right, uh, anyway, as we were talking about, the bottom side is like a trench under the ocean here. And so we're falling from top of the mountain and then all the way to the bottom of our trench here. Okay. Uh, the next topic was the resistance, R. R is the resistance. Okay. It also stands for resistor is is your circuit element that resists the flow of current.
So basically, a resistor is like an accident on the 405 or the 5, you know, eh. or just rush hour traffic. Uh, basically, there's a bunch of resistance in the way, so the traffic can't flow as quickly. The less resistance you have, the greater flow, which means more charges can flow per second. More cars can get through downtown LA faster um, when there's less resistance. You know, did you know? Due to the coronavirus, uh, there's less traffic now. The coronavirus has decreased uh, the resistance on the 405. That's pretty much the only benefit, I guess. Um, now, there is an equation, so let's take a look. R is equal to rho times L over A. where R, of course, is your resistance. Uh, rho, rho is called the resistivity. Resistivity. Uh, this is, again, a material, uh, um, oh, it's, uh, it's based on a, mater a material property. Uh, so kind of like, I was thinking of um, spring constants, K. So kind of like spring constant, spring constant K, um, it's going to depend on what the spring is made out of. So in this case, uh, what material you're using inside your inside of your resistor will, will determine essentially how much resistance you get, how much current can flow through that resistor. Uh, so a material property. Now you don't have to memorize all of the material properties. Of course, it's in a chart in your mastering uh, in your book. When you do your mastering physics problems, uh, just look up the chart. You know, if it's copper, it's some value. If it's nickel, it's some other value, etc. Okay. So silver is like really good; has very low resistivity, but copper is cheap and readily available. Uh, but it's not it's not just using metals technically. Um, most resistors are actually made out of different ceramics, so there's other materials we want to not decrease but uh, increase the resistance. Um, so a silver would be a terrible resistor because it conducts very well. Uh, resistivity and conductivity, uh, let's see, this lowercase sigma is called conductivity. Shout out to our chemistry students because uh, they'll, I'm sure they'll be learning about conductivity in their electrochemistry unit. Uh, but conductivity and resistivity are inversely related, so rho is 1 over the conductivity. Uh, so silver, which is very conductive, would be a terrible resistor. Um, so you use other ceramic materials um, inside your resistor. All right, um, L is the length. And of course, A would be the cross-sectional area. Okay, so imagine a resistor, basically a wire. Now, uh, when we use, where can I dono what? I'm not a part. Oh, I see. I'm not a partner yet. Uh, but if we get 75, I don't know how it works. I think it was like 75 followers, and I have to stream for like 25 hours. Or it's, there's some requirements, but eventually we'll get there. Uh, and then we can be, you know, a featured streamer or something, and put uh, be on the front page. But until then, stay tuned. Uh, anyway, uh, a wire technically. Uh, in our circuit diagrams are, you know, uh, zero resistance, 100% uh, conductivity. Uh, but real wires, any material really, uh, has some sort of resistance. Um, and so based on the type of material you have, imagine a piece of wire being a cylinder, because if you zoom in, it's like a cylinder. Uh, Pokemon Go, yeah, sure. <laughs> Actually, I don't know how to set up my streaming on my phone. And you don't want to be playing Pokemon Go now because, you know, social distancing. you got to stay home and isolate yourself from the general public. 
All right, where was I? All right, so let's say you have a wire. I'm gonna say this is a very zoomed in picture of a wire. Um, it's a cylinder. So we can say that there's a certain amount of charges. Remember again, when we say charges, we're now talking only about pseudo positive charges uh, that can move freely. So technically electrons only move freely. Uh, in reality, you know, you have electrons moving the other way, but uh, so this wire has a certain cross section. Uh, let me use blue. So this blue part is our area A. Uh, if it's circular, then the area, of course, is pi r squared. Um, the radius would be the radius of the circle r. Okay, And so based on that area, we can also control the flow. Uh, as you can see, the area is in the denominator. Okay, so if I have a bigger area, we have less resistance. What does the I stand for in the resistivity equation? What I? Oh, L. L, length in meters. Cross-sectional area measured in meters squared. I'm no Tagamir. The L is the length of the wire, so it would be how long of a wire you're using for your resistor. Okay, so uh, since L is in the numerator and A is in the denominator, the longer the wire, the more resistance. So you can imagine having a really long wire. Now those positive charges that are trying to get through will crash into more things before it can come out the other end, right? But if you have a shorter wire, there's less collisions happening. So you can zoom on by. Um, and then when you take AP Physics C, I'll tell you what really happens. <laughs> but for now, let's just imagine positive charges moving. Um, and of course, if you have a bigger area, notice how the area is in the denominator. That's not, uh, that's that's a one because resistivity and kind of, oh, oh, I see this thing. Uh, very good, thank you. Uh, this is a one. They are inversely related. Oh, related. Yes. Who's Zach? Zachary? We don't have a Zachary in our class. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. Posey head. Oh, that's Zach, Zach. Ah, yes, the former physics president. <laughs> Shouldn't you do stuff at your UCSD? Uh, SD? Uh, I don't know what you guys are using. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so with a bigger area, doo -doo -doo -doo, we can have more cars or more of our positive charges going through our big giant tunnel, so we get more flow per second. All right, so imagine a pipe. If you have a big giant pipe with a big giant radius R, um, of course you're gonna get more water per second. So you're gonna get more current per second. Um, all right, uh, so that's resistance. Um, slows down your current. Uh, let's keep on going. The next slide is Finally, the third thing we want to talk about, and that is current. Current is the actual substance that is moving. Um, again, for us, it will be these pseudo-positive charges. I am procrastinating my final project, of course. <laughs> um, so we want to imagine pseudo-positive charges moving through our circuit. 
Um, so in the real world, the current would be the flow of these water molecules. That's what this picture is trying to show you. We're zooming into our river, and we can see the water molecules moving through our river. The flow itself, how many water molecules are moving per second, would be the flow of uh, you know water current. Um, and similarly, we're going to instead talk about the flow of charge per second, how many charges I get every second, and that is our current. Um, so the variable for that is capital I, and I is current. Okay. I didn't talk about units, so I should also do that. Uh oh. Um, units for resistance. So this is. Let me go back. Uh, well, we already know what V is. So V is volts. Uh, units for resistance would be ohms, which is omega. Capital omega. Okay, uh, if you if you if you use the equation, you can kind of figure out what the units for your resistivity would be. Uh, notice how we have omega on the left side, and you have L over A. Um, L is m meters, and then A is meters squared. So we have resistivity times or me resistivity over meters equals omega. So resistivity must be in ohm meters. Ohm times meters. And we don't really use conductivity in AP1, so uh, if you do, remember, it's inversely related to resistivity. Uh, all right, I is current. Current, by definition, is the, the amount of charges you're getting, delta Q, divided by the, the delta T, so how much charge you get per second. So in other words, you get coulombs, Per second, uh, but we don't use coulombs per second. Instead, one coulomb per second is actually a amps, which is short for amperes. Oops. So stick to a. So a is amperes, but know that one ampere is one coulomb every second which is actually quite a lot so one current of oh sorry one amp of current remember is one coulomb and one coulomb is is you know lots of electrons if you remember from our lectures like 6 times 10 to the 23 or some huge number um, or just you know it's the inverse of 1.16 times 10 to the negative 19, so let me just plug it into my calculator, 1.6 e negative 19. Uh, so what was it again? Yeah, 6.25 times 10 to the 18th, 6.25, so 6.25 times 10 to the 18th amount of electrons per second. All right. So current, or current flow, current is the, the flow of positive charges from high potential to low potential. Uh, okay, so in our in our battery pathway uh, earlier, notice how we have this orange. This orange is telling you the or showing you the flow of current. It comes uh, out of the out of the positive end. Okay, it keeps on going, and then uh, and then it goes into the negative end. Okay, so that's the flow of current. Whereas um, 
electron flow. So this is this is I uh, electron flow. Jacob, get out. Uh, why? This stream be jumping for real. Uh, alert setup for followers. All oh, those uh, those things that pop up whenever someone follows. Yeah, that would be cool. Uh, but I don't know how to set that up yet. So maybe in the future. Stream labs. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and there's like bits or whatever, and we can we can make our own emojis. Uh, uh, yes, I'm using OBS. Um, I think it's about eight seconds. I think it's eight seconds. Eight second delay. All right, anyway, don't distract me. We're still in class. Uh, I'll take questions of random stuff after our lecture. Um, all right, so electron flow is the flow of negative charges. Yeah, I have a webcam, but I did not feel comfortable turning it on. <laughs> I don't want you to see anything in the background. The electron flow is the flow of negative charges. All right. So essentially, the electron flow is in the opposite direction of this pseudo positive charge that we're talking about flowing in our circuit from high potential to low potential. Well, negative charges from low potential to high potential. Okay, So again, you know, we have our salmon here going up the waterfall. Um, naturally, these electrons will just move upwards instead of downwards from uh, low to high. Not in the gravitational field, again, this is in the electric field. So of course, you know, electrons do have mass, and in the gravitational field, due to that mass, the electron will fall downwards. But in the electric field, assuming you know there's no gravitational field, you're kind of infinitely far away from everything else. You're just a tiny little uh, electron in space, and there seems to be a, a potential difference due to uh, you know other things that uh, that are far away, but the space around it is distorted that electron will go against the grain of the electric field from low potential to high potential. All right, so back to our picture then. So this orange was the flow of current. Let's go ahead and use our key here. This flow of current. I'm going to use a different color. Let's see this color. This is the flow of electrons or electron flow. So what's really happening? Yeah, let's not talk about other teachers in this stream. Keep it professional so we don't get in trouble. Um, all right, uh, flow of electrons. So what really happens technically is that the electrons come out of the minus side, so and they are actually moving the other way. That way. Okay. Now, why do we do this? Well, um, it's easier. Uh, the math is easier. Instead of worrying about a negative sign for electrons, we can just, uh, you know, do everything with a positive, and then um, 
you know, if we need to talk about electrons, we will. We'll just say it's in the opposite direction. So it just makes all the math really easy. So by convention, uh, we do it this way. You know, everything would have been fine if you know Ben Franklin just said electrons are positive charges instead. But once you establish electrons are negative charge, then we have you know we have to figure out other ways to circumvent that that issue. And so we did. We we created this uh, current flow, which is you know imagining pseudo positive charges moving instead of actual electrons moving. Um, you know, technically, you can't really see minus signs and plus signs on your on your electrons and protons. Uh, you know, it could have been red and blue. Uh, we just said electrons are blue charges and protons are red charges, but you know, plus and minus was just by convention. Okay. All right. Uh, so electron flow is the opposite to our current flow. Current is charge per second, which is one amp, one ampere. Um, all right. So you can, you know, uh, use this uh, first equation. I'm going to box it because it's kind of important. So use this first equation to do all sorts of problems like, you know, how much time does it take to get this many charges? Uh, based on time, you can just, you know, isolate your variable and plug and chug. So these two questions are important. Um, this one, the resistance equation, is actually given on the AP equation sheet. Uh, I believe two years ago on the AP1 test, there was a whole FRQ about this, about you know making a resistor out of pizza dough. So uh, and then all the all the students got mad, you know, uh, didn't want to do physics anymore and wanted to start their own pizzeria instead. <laughs> The best part of AP physics, or any kind of AP test, really, is uh, are, are all the memes that come out after, right after the, uh, right after the AP test. You'll see, like, right after your AP test, there's going to be floods of memes everywhere about random stuff. Technically, you're not supposed to talk about those questions because that's College Board rules. But if you, you know, if you create memes, well, actually, don't create memes. Let other people create it for you. Uh, but if you laugh about memes, uh, do it privately. Uh, don't want to get in trouble. A ladybug on a spinning platter. Ah, that's a classic physics problem. Uh, typically, it's uh, on an AP1 unit exam. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about some circuit symbols. I should have. Uh, um, let me switch my screen to the PowerPoint. Voila. And I will move this up. Oh, 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 there we go. So here's some circuit symbols. Um, write them down or draw them. The basic ones for now that you need to know is a battery. Uh, the battery, the resistor, uh, and the other ones will kind of will kind of add on to our list as we go. Again, download these powerpoints because I don't want to stare at this screen for too long. Uh, copy these and memorize these circuit symbols. But uh, let me give it to you in um, in one note. Uh, will we be using these uh, symbol when we get back to class in two weeks? Uh, well, from today onwards, you're going to be using these symbols. So whether we get back to school or not is irrelevant at this point. From henceforth, you are electrical engineers, I guess. <laughs> All right, so the ones that we went to, uh, went to know, definitely starting today, is the battery, which is a, a big line and a small line. Uh, the two vertical lines that we have here uh, represent the actual wire connection. The symbol is just the, the middle part. So this is the battery or electric potential gradient, or diff sorry, gra uh, difference. All right. Uh, next year, yeah. Uh, 
So here's our battery. It's a big line and a small line. Now, you don't have to orient the battery the same way, uh, uh, sorry, uh, vertically. So if you draw it this way, hi, Mr. Sir. Hello, Riot. Wait, Riot Physics. Who is that? Um... Uh, so if you draw it vertically, so then visualize this symbol as if you have a battery, dimple side up, plus flat side down. So this uh, this big line, <laughs> the big line is the positive end, and the small line is the negative end. So the flat side of your battery. Okay. Now, of course, I can draw it sideways, horizontally, like so, or the other way. It doesn't matter which way you draw it. Just make sure you orient it, um, orient it based on the big line and the small line. The big line is always the positive end, and the small line is the negative end. How do we know what it, uh, when it's APC time? APC is after AP1, so we'll go honors first, AP1 next, and then APC. Kind of like first period, second period, third period. Uh, so somewhere around 11 o'clock we start APC 11 a.m. Uh, but anyway uh, what I'm doing actually is uh, stopping the stream every time the class ends so the uh, video will uh, will go up. Of course, you can watch the video directly from Twitch in the video section. Um, it's up there, I think, for 14 days. If I become a partner, it stays up for two months, so let's get that going. Uh, but for now, it's only two weeks. But again, I, I download it and then re-upload to YouTube, so it'll always be on YouTube. Uh, so technically, you can, you can watch it at your own time. Um, but of course, being in the live stream, you can ask me questions directly and then uh, I can try to answer them within the time frame. All right. Uh, physics only. I don't. <laughs> I'm not gonna stream video games. Uh, so it's the yeah. Can't stream video games. Fortnite sucks. All right. Uh, so battery, you can orient orient them uh, vertically or horizontally. Doesn't really matter. Um, you can even, um, you know, link up batteries. So um, if you if you use a remote control, you'll see that depending on the style, of course. Um, uh, I guess the Amazon one, the uh, Amazon is vertically oriented. So you have two batteries that are uh, touching top down. So you have one battery and then the dimple side of the battery touches the flat side of the first one like so and so what you're doing is you're basically uh, increasing the height of your mountain you you are increasing the potential difference between the bottom of the second battery and the top of the first battery so again this is still plus and of course minus plus we're kind of ignoring the middle part pew, pew, um, and going straight to the bottom so you can imagine this being a Mega battery. Whoa. Okay. Now, if this was a double A battery, double A, how many volts is a double A battery? Stream. Answer now. Oh, this is where we. Oh, we can even class flow it up, too. Uh, eventually, we'll, we'll get to that, but today is my first day, so. I'm gonna make keep it keep it simple. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh God, class flow is great. Uh, yes, it's 1.5 volts, 1.5 volts, and the bottom one is also 1.5 volts. But if I have this mega battery, by linking them together, what we're doing is uh, three volts. Uh, so your remote control typically uses three volts. Uh, not set up. Uh, yeah, yeah. You have to. I think you have to be a partner uh, to get those little. What are they called? Bits? Or I don't even know what they are. Uh, they look like little. I don't know. Stickers or something. 
Anyway, uh, so by linking them together, we get a bigger potential. Um, sometimes you'll see these uh, 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 this symbol instead, where you have a big line, small line, big line, small line. You can imagine it being a bigger battery. Um, so this is technically a delta V. Uh, in an ideal case, where it's a perfect battery without any kind of loss, um, your book will use, or problems, will use this epsilon. Uh, and this is an, you know, it's called an EMF, or an electromotive force. Electromotive force. Okay, uh, for us, uh, we don't have to, you know, know all of this. Uh, if you see this symbol, just know that we're talking about voltage, and if you're talking about voltage, you know, it's basically a battery. Um, but you can call it an ideal battery. Okay, and the reason for this is that. You know, actual batteries have a tiny bit of resistance inside. It's called an internal resistance, little tiny r. Um, so as you put more load on the battery, the voltage of the battery will actually drop and not stay constant. Whereas this epsilon, this EMF, uh, is an ideal battery. So the voltage is always exactly what it says it is, uh, no matter what you're what you're doing. Um, and so I'll, when we do problems, you'll see um, you'll see I'll I'll use a V with Sarah. Uh, so I'll use this symbol. Uh, just know that this symbol is delta V, and delta V is actually an ideal battery epsilon. Okay. All right, so that's the battery symbol. Uh, the next one is the resistor, which is just a squiggly. It doesn't matter how many spikes you draw. Uh, a resistor. You can draw it horizontally or vertically. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the next one you want to know is a switch. So a switch is like a drawbridge where you can kind of close the bridge down. So imagine a boat passing through and you have the drawbridge open. The cars that are that are on the bridge, so let's zoom in. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. I can't zoom in. Oh, there we go. Uh, imagine a car uh, basically waiting to move forward. It can't jump over. It'll It'll crash. So when the drawbridge is open, now you have a traffic jam. And the positive charges can't move forward. So can't move forward. So we're stuck. So when you have a switch open, this is open, which means off. Now when you close it and you just close the switch, And when you close the switch, um, essentially you have it closed. And closed means on. So an open switch is off, meaning you know if you have a light switch, it's the light is off. Uh, and when you push it down, you've closed it. You've now turned on the light. That's because the the charges can now flow uh, as nothing is blocking the way. Uh, so. This is the symbol for switch, uh, and it's drawn in the open orientation. Um, and if you have just a straight line, any straight line is an ideal wire. So in your circuit drawings, how much wire you have doesn't really matter because it's ideal and it's zero resistance. But remember, um, the actual equation for resistance has an L in it. So in reality, the longer wire you have, the more resistance you have, so the more voltage you'll lose along the way. So when you're using cabling, you want to make sure your cabling is as short as possible. That way there's less loss. Otherwise, you have to use some sort of amplifier that can amplify the signal halfway. Um, this is how you know transmission lines work, and we can talk all about that at a later time. You have a question. Yes, why don't you just write the question? And then I'll try to answer if I have, uh, if I have time. Just 
stop. Let's see, these. This is why <laughs> we need moderators. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, how do I do a, a timeout for naughty students? <laughs> you go to a corner. All right. Ideal wire. So straight line is an ideal wire, which is similar to which is similar to um, a closed switch. So when the switch is closed, notice how it basically looks like a wire. Uh, again, in, uh, in circuit diagrams, the switch is also zero resistance, so everything just flows 100%. Nishank banned these trolls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nishank, I need to make you a moderator if you're here. Uh, let me know which one's your account, and then I'll figure out how to do mods and stuff. I don't know who you are. You should use a professional name. That way I'll know who you are. Yeah. Oh no, my headset is, is low on battery. All right, we gotta hurry. Uh, so ideal wire, zero resistance. So know your battery symbol, big line, small line. Uh, resistor, squiggly. Uh, switch with a draw bridge and wire. Um, and the wire is just a straight line. All right, um, that's it for today for AP Physics 1. Um, if you have any other questions, email to me. Uh, when I put the, post this on uh, on YouTube, make sure you you know follow on YouTube and then, uh, or what is it, subscribe on YouTube and then write down your uh, questions in the comments below. Whoa. All right, so see you next time. Yay.